So we finally have what everybody's been waiting for. Preseason hockey. What's going on, Avalanche fans? Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli, bringing you another episode of the podcast dedicated to your Colorado Avalanche. And thank you for making the Locked On Avalanche podcast your first listen of the day. On today's episode, we will be discussing our second burning question for the Avalanche this season, which is their depth. Uh, we will be doing the five burning questions all this week. Uh, yesterday we did, I completely forgot what we did yesterday already. Wow. Like that, that's how much goes on in a day, uh, that I can't even remember what it was. Let me look it up. Why am I blanking on what the heck it was? Um, oh yeah, the health, the health and injury department of the avalanche can they stay healthy today we are doing depth and then uh for the remainder of the week we will also be doing uh kind of like the burning questions about the avalanche as far as rookies the playoffs physicality are the ones that we will tackle later in the week but today it is about the depth we will also be talking about uh nazim kadri he made his first appearance not that we haven't heard from him um, but in the setting of a, uh, press conference, we heard from him today. So we're going to hear about his words, uh, and kind of just what to expect from him this season. And then finally, uh, something interesting that went on in practice yesterday on Monday for the avalanche and their power play, uh, JT Comfer made an appearance and that kind of has people up in arms and it's like, why would he be there? There has to be other options. And there was a reason why Jared Bednar put him in there. And when you look at the roster, he's probably going to be the guy. So silver lining in anything, look for the positive in that. And we'll talk about that as well. But first things first, follow the show on social media outlets on Twitter, locked on or LOPN underscore avalanche on Twitter, locked on avalanche on Instagram. Send questions, comments, concerns, opinions to LockedOnAvalanche at gmail.com. And check out the show's YouTube page as well. Just go to YouTube, search for Locked on Avalanche, and hit that subscribe button so you can get <clears throat> notified whenever a new episode goes live. All right, so let's start with Nazem Kadri. Uh, came, if you've been paying attention to the abs in the offseason, if you're one of those fans that, you know, once the season is over and you kind of tune out, um, to anything going on with hockey and the avalanche that's, you know, that's understandable and, and I get it, but he has talked in the past. Um, and he find, but he finally had his first post game press conference where he's in front of the media. They're asking him questions and, uh, he kind of repeated a little bit of what he said a couple times in the the uh, post or the off season, really, <clears throat> and he said, you know, I was not going in to make a, a play to intentionally hurt a player who was Justin Falk of the St. Louis Blues. Uh, it, it's a fast game. He was going in for a check, and he just lined it up. I want to say poorly. Just he was off his target, and that caused him to hit his head. And then we know the rest. He was suspended, didn't come back. If the Avs could have won one more game, he would have come back for the playoffs, which would have made a huge difference against Vegas, no doubt. But he, he, you know, he didn't, he's not going to really <clears throat> apologize for it uh, because it wasn't intentional. He did say he's glad the guy didn't get hurt. He's not that much of a callous human being where he's, you know, says, oh, well, you know, his head shouldn't have been there type of guy. I think he does feel bad that the guy got hurt, but he's not going to feel bad for trying to make a play. <clears throat> and he said that, and he said, you know, if I don't play that, if I play that a different way, I let him get by me and, and it's possible he scores a goal. And he said there was no ill will leading up to that play, which is true. I mean, I think Gabe Landeskog set the tone with the, uh, the fight against Braden Shen. 
So it's not like, you know, St. Louis backed off in in trying to be a physical team, <clears throat> but they they weren't playing a style where there was a lot of cheap shots going around. So, he, but he knows the importance of what he brings to the team and he he feels comfortable in knowing that these guys have his back. Uh, including coach Jared Bednar and Bednar went on record and said, I, I don't have a problem with how he played. Uh, they did get into the suspension a little bit. And was it unfair that they didn't bring him or, you know, if they didn't look at his suspension and lower it, he did get into that a little bit. That's all stuff he said in the off season. Um, he did think it was a, a bit harsh, but you know, he, there's really, he, he kind of wants to move on from it. Uh, and not in the sense that, you know, he just wants to forget about that it happened. Uh, but just the fact that it, it's over. There's nothing you can do about it now. You can't change the outcome of any of it. <clears throat> you can't change the outcome of the suspension. You can't change the outcome of the postseason. Uh, you can't do anything about it. But having said that, I, I think for him and his teammates and his coach, they're going to move ahead as business as usual, which is good. That's fine. Uh, from a fan standpoint and let's, I mean, the, even the players, let's, let's, let's say, you know, even the team itself, they can say all that stuff right now. And I'm fine with that. And I believe them when they say things like, you know, we, we trust in what Nas can bring to this team. And I do too. I think he's a, a perfect fit for this team. And he's been a good boy for the two plus years that he's been here. This was really the only run in that he's had and it cost him. So now you have to think about that stuff. Uh, they're not going to say that out front. They're not going to say, yeah, I really hope he doesn't hit somebody because then we might be out. You know, he might not be with us for even longer next time. They're not going to say that stuff, but there's, you know, you don't say the quiet part out loud. Uh, you can, you know that they're thinking it in the back of their head. I don't think it's going to change the way that they play. Um, and, I think the thing with with this whole situation, especially for the fans, is they're hesitant to to really know what they're going to get out of Kadri in that department, in being physical. Uh, and you don't know what to expect because we haven't seen him on the ice since that happened. So he hasn't had a chance to redeem himself, and he hasn't had a chance to put the fans' minds at ease like, I'm not out to do this all the time again. You know, this, this hasn't flipped a switch for me where now I'm just going to be headhunting guys like I, like I was been known as in the past. He hasn't had that opportunity to redeem himself. And I think once he gets back out on the ice and, you know, he starts putting games together and, and being that player for the avalanche that he has been since he came over to Denver, I think fans will take a step back and say like, okay, not that he's not, you know, he hasn't given up his physical nature, but I think the last remaining thought that a lot of people have of Nazem Kadri right now is that hit because we've had nothing since then. So he just got to get back out on the ice, show people, you know, what he can do, why he's here. And I think people will be okay with him again. That's not to say uh, once the playoffs come back around again, all of this is going to come back. You know it is. But here's the thing for Kadri. Uh, I think he has more problems than just that. Uh, we, we can't forget about how he, his production or lack thereof towards the end of the year was glaring. Uh, on April, let me see, I got his stats up here. Starting on April 7th, he went 11 straight games and didn't register a point almost a month. So he went from April 7th and then he didn't score a point until May 3rd. At that point, there was, I think, seven games left in the season and he had one goal and three assists to finish out the year. And I said it at the time, a lot of people were forgiving him because he is a very good postseason player. People might laugh at that because he seems to get in trouble a lot in the postseason, but he's done very well in the postseason. Uh, so I think people were giving him a pass, waiting for uh, the postseason to come around where he can take off. And then if he has a good postseason, 
those 11 games where you did nothing and then a few points in the last handful of games, nobody remembers that stuff. But is that a problem going? Is is that going to carry over into this season? I'm genuinely not concerned about the physical nature of his play. That's how he plays. If it happens again, it happens again. And then you have to deal with it. I'd like for it not to happen. I'm more concerned about the production or lack thereof in the last month and a half of the season where he was pretty much non-existent. I don't want that to carry over either. Uh, the reason why I think it won't, it's contract year for Nazem Kadri. And we all know how guys step up, you know, and he's the type of guy that gives you 100% no matter what. But when you have that added bonus of you're going into a contract year and now he's over 30. So it's not he's going to cash in like he would. And the, the, I think he's doing four and a half or something like that. Uh, bring up cat friendly quick. I think he's around five or something. Uh, four and a half. Yeah. He's around four and a half and he's 30 right now. So he's not going to get more than that in his next contract, but he still has a lot of hockey left in him. So he is playing for a contract. So I think all of those things combined are going to lead to a very, uh, satisfying season for Nazem Kadri, if you ask me, but We'll get through the people are having like questions about him, maybe from a fan standpoint. And I, I think the players in the back of their minds think it too, uh, maybe to a lesser, much lesser extent than the fans. Uh, I think all that will go away, but it will rear its ugly head once again when the playoffs come around. And I'm sure we'll be talking about it again several months from now. All right. Uh, let's hear from our good people over at rock auto right now. And with the ever increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. So save time and money and use RockAuto.com. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. Rock auto is a family business serving do it yourselfers for over 20 years. Prices are reliably low for every customer. So go explore their easy to use website today. Find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on. And the how did you hear about a section so they know that we sent you to them. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. It's rockauto.com. Also brought to you by Direct TV Stream. And I want to tell you about a simple way to get all of the entertainment that you love without the hassle. It's direct TV stream. It brings your live TV and on demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports movies and shows all in one place. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with direct TV stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. Once again, that website is directtv.com and learn more about direct TV stream. All right. Uh, our burning question of the day is depth. And I think that is uh, one thing that is on the minds of everybody in avalanche land. And I think the main reason why it's on everybody's mind is because the team in the depth department just looks different. And you don't know if these guys that the Avalanche have uh, brought in to replace the guys who have left can hold up. You know, last year, that, that was a close-knit team. You know, you didn't really bring in a ton of players that really had to fit the mold and learn the system. Uh, everybody was ready to go on day one. And... <laughs> You, you want to keep a good team together as much as possible. But in this landscape of sports, it's just impossible. And this, this is the case with the Avalanche. Uh, you know, so you losing guys, let me see, from this is who you lost. I'm just going through. This is not, you know, a, a full list, but you lose guys like Pierre Edward Belmar, great in the locker room, uh, Matt Calvert. He's no longer there. Retirement injuries and, and concussions. Uh, obviously, you lost Donskoy. Um, 
going through the list here. Who else? Uh, obviously, you lost Graves. Um, Ian Cole was traded during the season last year. And uh, Grubauer, obviously, signed with uh, Seattle. Th- that's that's just a handful of guys, all that played a big role. All of those guys played a very big role in this team. So you need to replace all that. Did the Avalanche do enough to replace that? I, I don't think they, they – I don't want to say like they, they – I'll I'll say this. They didn't do enough to replace those guys, but I think they did a good job in who they brought in. And this is what you have to do. You know, the landscape of a team is constantly changing. Um, And for the Avalanche, it's no different. Yeah, you, they tried, they tried to keep, they tried to keep uh, Brandon Saad. Sorry, I missed him. Um, They tried to keep him. Um, They tried to keep Grubauer. Uh, but, you know, sometimes those guys just want to go somewhere else and the money isn't right or the term isn't right or just the fit isn't right. I think the fit for both of those guys was fine. Um, I really thought Grubauer would stay. I really did. Um, I had a, a feeling that Saad would go, but I thought maybe the the allure of – um you know, playing for a, a team like the Avalanche would, would keep him around a little bit longer, and it didn't. So what did you bring in is now the question. <laughs> and it's nothing that's going to blow your socks off. So that's that's where people are like this team. I think people are hesitant to say this team isn't as good. I think they're definitely as good because on the top, you still have the best of the best. And that's where your games are won. Yeah, you know, you're – your bottom six definitely plays a role, um, but you're not looking towards guys like Darren Helm um, and Mikhail Maltsev to really pull out a game for you. You need them, um, and they need to be. They need to understand their role. But can can a guy like I don't know? Can a guy like Helm be what Pierre Edward Belmar was in more ways than one? That remains to be seen. And that's the problem going into a new season when you have new guys taking on new roles. Everybody wants to say they're not as good as what we had last year because you were comfortable with what they had last year. And we knew what we were getting from those guys last year. Well, now they're gone. And now who's to say that when P.E. Belmar came in, nobody knew he was going to be that liked. You know, But this is the rotation that happens in sports. Guys leave, new guys come in. Don't just immediately discredit the guys that come in and say that they can't do the job. They can't do anything that uh, you know the guys last year could do. And the big one is Donskoy. You know, I think that that's that's the one glaring question on who can replace him. And maybe it's not one guy. And it sucks to say that. Maybe it's got to be a couple guys that make up the stats for for Jonas Donskoy. I keep throwing out. Alex Newhook, that's a lot to throw on a rookie. And I don't know if he can get to the point level that Donskoy did. But maybe not this year, but maybe in in years to come, he definitely can be. So are you sacrificing a little bit of the short term for long term? Yeah, maybe you are. But you know, or you think you know what Newhook could become. I think you're going to see a lot this year. I'm telling you, if, if New, even if Newhook doesn't, get to what Donskoy was last year. Uh, let me just bring up Donskoy's stats so I know exactly what he's at. Um, oh, it just jumped on me. Let me see. So that's not coming up because I'm all over the place with this. But anyway, I think, you know, he was around 30 points. Oh, here he is. Um, I think he had like 30 some points last year. 31. Um Let's say let's say Newhook gets to like somewhere in the mid twenties. Are are you not happy with that and saying like okay like he is trending in the direction we knew he was going to trend? So maybe for a year you're giving up a few points, but for the years to come, he's your guy. And this is just this is what happens in in sports. You have like some guys got to go. You don't want them to, but they do. And the guys that come in give them an opportunity. 
And I think that's what the Avalanche are, are, are all about. And, and, and when guys come in and they're playing for – look what happens in, like, in baseball with the Yankees or the Red Sox or the Dodgers. They'll trade for guys that are just not having good seasons. And when they trade for them, they're in first place. Or you know, it's their first they, – they get them in the offseason, try to re- reinvigorate their career. And because they're playing on a much better team when they came over from – I don't know who's a horrible team, maybe like the Twins – I think the twins are bad. I don't know. Um, They kind of turn things around and you have a really good team right now with the avalanche. So give, give these depth players a chance. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the rookies because we are going to cover rookies uh, as a burning question tomorrow. But um, as far as the depth, I think it's a big question mark for the, I think it's one of the bigger ones because of everything I was just saying, we don't know where these guys fit, how they fit, um, and what they can do. But I think as the season goes on, you know, we, we've always say, you know, put faith in Joe, uh, and why all of a sudden are we kind of not, some people are not believing in that anymore. I fully do. I fully do. Did I want everybody that we lost last year back? Absolutely. That's, that's what you want. You want, I don't want to say it's loyalty. You just want to have a team that knows exactly where they're at year in and year out. And you don't want to lose anybody. It's just not feasible in the world of sports. So you knew you were going to lose someone to the Kraken. Uh, You you assume you're going to lose some guys to free agency. And uh, you just have to know, trust your scouts, trust your system, trust your gut. And uh, the guys that you bring in, you hope that they can replicate the guys that you had to let go for one reason or another. I'm comfortable with knowing that this team will be good this year. And uh, hopefully that these new guys that they brought in uh, know what is expected. I think they do because <laughs> a lot is going to be expected of them uh, to, to hit the ground running right off the bat and not have that kind of awkward getting to know you phase. Cause you gotta get, we gotta get off to a good start because everybody, if you don't, everybody's coming after you. Like, Oh, these new guys aren't, aren't holding their own. There's, there's very little patience when it comes to fandom. All right. Let us hear from bet online. Yes. BetOnline.ag and the football season. It's back and better than ever. And all eyes are on the gridiron. So bet online, it's your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season with a brand new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests. BetOnline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That is double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use the promo code NFL100 from football, basketball, boxing, obviously hockey, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports and your online sports book experts. All right. Uh, it was reported during, well, not reported. It was seen. Um at practice on Monday, a lot of special teams action going on. And the one thing that kind of stuck out that everybody's jumping on is your power play one unit, uh, all your usual suspects. And this is kind of what we're talking about (laughs) extending from our depth conversation. Uh, you have Makar, you have Rantanen, you have, uh, Landeskog, McKinnon, who's that last guy. It was JT Comfer. Um, and a lot of fans are saying, like, what the heck is he doing on the power play? Um, Jared Bednar was asked, and he simply just said he's a right-handed shot. And he needs a right-handed shot on the power play, <clears throat> obviously outside of Nathan McKinnon. Um, when you look at the roster, you don't have a lot of options. If that's the route you want to go, Uh, You have Alex Bukaj, who we don't even know if he's going to be on the opening day roster. You have Jean-Luc Foudy, who likely won't be this year. Um, You have Martin Kaut. Uh, I mean, he's got an outside shot to make the roster, 
But if he does, is he going to be on the power play one? Doubtful. Um, you have Jason Megna. Same thing with him. Uh, the one interesting one here is Logan O'Connor. Logan O'Connor is your right-handed shot. So uh, would he be given an opportunity to jump on that power play one unit? If that's, again, if that's the route that you want to go, you're limited. Uh, the only other ones are Keith for Sherwood, and then you're getting into your defenseman. Um, and their power play two unit, they ran with Taves and Gerard all the time. So they're not against that. But I don't think you're going to, you know, you you want offensive powerhouses on that first power play unit. And on the defensive end outside of Kale McCarr, um, really, I mean, it's Justin Barron. And we don't, you know, expect him to to make the opening day roster. So your options, JT Comfer, Logan O'Connor, Kiefer Sherwood, uh, Martin Cowell. So that's really it. Um, but I don't think it's all doom and gloom for for that. You know, Comfort can be a good player. And and how I was saying and when, with the depth conversation about bringing guys in to a better team and a better club, sometimes their 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 play just improves overnight because they're playing on a team that's expected to do much. That's true within the team for guys that have been here and, and moving them up to lines. You know, we saw what happened with Tyson Jost uh, last year. He took a big jump and a lot more was expected of him on the penalty kill. You know, you lose a guy like Matt Nieto and then who's great on the penalty kill and they kind of just turned it over to Jost to be like, all right, you, you know, you, you have to do what he did. I think he did. So you give guys more uh, more like weight on their shoulders, and sometimes they come through. Could could this be JT Confer's moment? I mean, you're playing with guys like, you know, your big three with Landis Cog, with, with Ranton and, and McKinnon. Uh, you, you better do the job or else, you know, you're going to get replaced. <clears throat> I think he can. I think, you know, if you're, pu- if you're playing on – uh, and he's done that before, not many times, but there's been times where he has played on the top line. I think when like Rantanen got hurt, <clears throat> um, it didn't last very long. So maybe that's a, a, a bad argument. But, you know, Confer has been there long enough where he knows the system. He knows his role. And I think if given an opportunity on a top line, let's just see what he can do. Let's just see. I mean, he just has to not screw up. <laughs> it's easier said than done, <clears throat> but just make crisp passes. Uh, find McKinnon, find Nathan McKinnon. Cause when you're that guy on the power play unit, uh, you, you can, you can benefit because everybody's going to be cluing in on uh, McKinnon, definitely Rantanen. And you can kind of just float around in a, on a corner. And if you just get in the right pocket, he can find you and he's capable of scoring. He's capable of doing that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's not ideal. Uh, but again, this team, it's its like a quarterback um, who doesn't matter who his wide receivers are. He can make them look good no matter what. Uh, and I think just putting JT Confer in, in a, a winnable situation, he's going to take advantage of it. And this is another thing we just have to wait and see. Let the depth guys get their feet wet, get comfortable, and, uh, you know, kind of step back and then down the road kind of assess things and do the same thing with Comfort if he is given this power play one position um, when the season starts. And we'll know. Uh, we'll see where how it goes on Tuesday night against Vegas for their first uh, preseason game. We'll see who's definitely going to be in there. Uh, and if he is, he might surprise some people. But it remains to be seen. Uh, I don't know. I, I just I feel like the, the team knows how to go about the, and navigate these questions. Um. No, is it is is it ideal? <clears throat> is it what any of us thought? No, but that's what we got. 
And uh, I'm, I'm the type to to say, let let's see how it plays out before we start panning it. If it doesn't work out, then by all means, say we got to switch this up. But right now it's what we got. All right. Um, I think it's going to be it for today, everybody. So again, thank you for tuning in and making the Locked On Avalanche podcast your first listen. Definitely head over to Locked On NHL for your second listen of the day. Um, you know, with preseason games going on and you want to keep up on all that stuff, Locked On NHL is the place to go for that. And definitely tune in on Thursday when Adam Denker and I host uh, that show every Thursday, actually. So, all right. Um, that'll be it for today. It's always appreciated, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And we will be back tomorrow. Our burning question for that will be the rookies. So definitely tune in for that. There is a lot of them. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in once again. And we'll see everyone tomorrow. Here's Jovi.